President Barack Obama took a definitive stand on one of the most contentious and politically charged social issues of the day this week. In an interview with ABC's Robin Roberts, he announced his support for legalizing same-sex marriage. I was sensitive to the fact that uh, for a lot of people, you know, the, the word marriage was something that evokes very powerful traditions, religious beliefs, and so forth. As I talk to friends and family and neighbors, uh, when I think about uh, members of my own staff who are in incredibly committed monogamous relationships, same-sex relationships, who are raising kids together, uh, when I think about uh, those soldiers or airmen or marines or uh, sailors who are out there fighting on my behalf uh, and yet feel constrained, even now that Don't Ask, Don't Tell is gone because uh, they're not able to uh, commit themselves in a marriage. Uh, at a certain point, I've just concluded that um, for me personally, it is important for me to go ahead and affirm that uh, I think same-sex couples should be able to get married. We'll talk about all the issues surrounding his announcement, including the impact it will have on his bid for four more years in the White House on today's show. But first up, is this a religious issue or a civil rights issue, and what will be the impact when it comes to this country? Joining me now is Reverend Darlene Nipper. She's the de Deputy Executive Director of the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force, and Bishop Harry Jackson, pastor of Hope Christian Church in Beltsville, Maryland. Uh, folks, welcome to Washington Watch. What do you see the impact will be uh, in terms of the country? Will this uh, cause an even faster, larger shift in terms of public opinion? I think this will move public opinion forward. I mean, the American people, the, the president, frankly, jo joined the majority of the American people who already support same-sex marriage and marriage equality. So uh, I thought it was great that he came out uh, in support of marriage equality. And uh, the evolution is complete, apparently. And so that's a good thing for, uh, for LGBT people, and in particular for lesbian and gay uh, committed couples. The polls show that a majority of Americans support same-sex marriage. But the ultimate poll, when you begin to actually measure, vote, measure Americans, is how people actually vote. There have been 32 different refer re referendums across the country, uh, and same-sex marriage supporters have lost all of those, th those particular measures. So, Bishop Jackson, uh, when you hear the majority of the country supports it, but then when you look at the voting, what's going on there? Because that's, that's sort of telling two different stories. It really is. It says to me that maybe the wording in the polls is a little bit different, but in the privacy of that poll, or actually the booth, when you have to vote, folks, I think, really went to their own heart beliefs. And no matter what, they're going to tell a poll, you know, and want to look good in public kind of thing. I think Americans really are not there yet. We have two ministers here, uh, and so the religious issue has come up. Uh, several pastors, the president was on a conference call with several African-American pastors, all who have been supportive of him uh, throughout the election, throughout the last three years. Many of them said, Mr. President, I can't stand with you on this. Uh, and so uh, can, should there be a religious discussion as a part of this, or as others say, this really should be a non-religious discussion, it should be a government discussion? Well, I think it's important to allow uh, religious institution, institutions the opportunity to actually um, support the tenets that they believe in. I don't think this is about that. This is about actually having equal rights for people who are loving people who, so that they can raise their families and uh, join the rest of the American uh, uh, population in moving forward with equality. This is not about telling uh, Reverend Jackson or anyone else that they should or shouldn't say anything in their church or their institutions. That's just not what it's about. But what's interesting, though, and Bishop, I want you to speak to this, mm -hmm. and Darlene, if you can also respond to it, is that when folks have expressed a religious view, mm -hmm. then they, you and others, are called bigots, are called homophobes. Exactly. And so, as ministers, how do you deal with that? Because could someone potentially say, look, I don't support same-sex marriage, I don't hate somebody, I'm not against somebody, I simply don't support it because of my religious beliefs. And because you face the criticism. I, I do, and, and you articulated my own heart belief. I got family members who are gay, all kind of issues. But I believe biblical faithfulness causes me to come to this point. But I also believe that generations from now, 
You may have situations in school, how kids are raised, that I'm not so sure we're oh, clear no. on. No, oh, please, I, I no, listen no, no, to no, you. No, 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 So, yes. so another you thing, no, wow. if you're really about equality, why aren't you for polygamy uh, and other things? Because those kinds of people, they're more polygamous, who are Muslims and other faith in the nation. Why don't you include that in the change, or is it? We just want our time, is what the gay activists are saying, as opposed to really being for equality for everybody on the issue of marriage. Let me be clear that I, I don't have any problems with Muslims in, my, in this society and what Muslims choose We're to believe in this so, second, society, because I think it's just really wrong. You know, my role in um, um, working with people in their spiritual beliefs is to walk through this very human process of facing the challenges that we all face, and we all choose whatever our spiritual beliefs are to help us to walk through that process. I don't think it's my position to spread hate or fear or anything like that as a person who uh, is ordained towards anybody and whatever beliefs they have. Rather, it's important for us to focus on the issue at hand. This is about civil equality. And I think African Americans have a unique experience of how important this is to us in, our, in this country. And so, you know, for us, it's just about equality. Simple, Not, nothing else, nothing more. The religious issue, I think people get to choose what their religious beliefs are. I don't think that those beliefs should impede anyone's ability to live in a just society. Bishop, if the government allows same-sex marriage and they allow churches not to not be forced to perform those marriages do you see that simply as a win-win not really because of education if you change the family you've got to then change what parenting looks like and what education looks like David Catania after same-sex marriage was voted in in Washington DC immediately wanted to change sex education in the seventh eighth grade and encourage kids to experiment sexually. As a minister, I'm saying all this baggage with this is way beyond two people loving each other. It's really invasive in terms of what goes on in the culture. And those are my concerns. And I want to know what the president's going to do. Because I don't think he just announced it to say, well, you know, I finally decided 20 years ago, and you probably know this from being from Chicago, Jeremiah Wright, um, had all kind of commitment services. It wasn't legal marriage, but he was in a church that was pro same sex relationships for years. So I think he was a measured thought uh, on his part, but there's something behind it. And I, for one, want to know what you're going to do, Mr. Well, president. I'm going to give you the final comment on that. Uh, Pastor Joel Hunter, the president's spiritual advisor, the president called him, told him exactly what the position was. Pastor Hunter said, you know, I certainly am sad to hear that. Uh, but I, he said, I'm still going to continue to be your spiritual advisor. And so what that told me was, even if you might have a difference of opinion, you still can st still be friends with somebody, still can have a conversation, still have a relationship and still disagree. Final comments. I absolutely believe that. And I think the president and uh, First Lady Obama made it very clear what they believe in as Christians, which is treat others as you would have them treat you. You know, we want to be able to treat each other with respect. I, all due respect to Reverend uh, Jackson, you know, there's nothing in the law in D.C. that says anything about people uh, ch doing anything in schools at all. It's just not about that. It is about a fair society, a society where equality comes first, where we're all treated equally with respect and dignity as human beings. And that's it. And that's all. This fear monging is really wrong and it's inappropriate. And I would never do it as an ordained person. I don't need to f make you afraid of what I believe in in order to move forward with what I believe in. And after move forward with the show, we're out of time for this segment. I certainly appreciate both of you being here in Washington Watch.